get this thing built. I want to see what this thing can do. So this is the new Asus X570 Pro. So for the folks that are used to getting the Asus Prime boards, don't mind that glitching. That is not you. That is this cable. Putting in the new fourth gen PCIe 4x4 one terabyte NVMe, the fourth gen NVMe. Things got huge heat sinks on them too. This that's actually got a fan cooler on there, and that's the board. This is the F4 3600 memory. I'm putting the 3600 in here. I saw Linus said something that they were having some weird memory stuff going on with between 3200 and 3600. I'd rather just go 3600 memory personally. And let's go ahead and get this NVMe in. Oh man, that thing is like this thing's like a little mini ASIC. And weight, this thing's got some weight to it. Man, they they actually wrap this entire thing in a full heat sink. These things are supposed to get pretty warm. Nobody's seen nothing yet on the performance numbers on the 5700. That's a scary thing because that might mean that the architecture is not found by any of the miners, and we'll find that out. Hopefully, that's not the case. But that is spoiler alert. Could be a thing. Let's get the uh, processor in. I did not opt for water cooling yet. We may do water cooling with this, but I just wanted to speed this build up and doing a water cooler kind of just, that's a long part of the build, like on newer builds these days, is doing the water cooler. We gotta be careful with this, bros. I don't wanna pull a Linus on this. All right, 3700. They did not have any 3900s. I probably would've got a 3900 if they would've had one there. We got an M2 slot here. That's socket three. And there's an M2 socket right here. I think I'm going to do the one that's underneath its own heatsink, but I don't know if this one will actually set with its own heatsink under there. I don't think it will. So I think we're going to have to come into this one right here. I don't like having this one underneath the GPU, though. And I don't know if this cooler is tall, too, so tall that it's going to actually interfere with the other cooler because it's going to set right here. And that is actually higher than the chipset. I don't think they were all thinking when they put these on. So there is a thermal pad underneath that cooler and these are actually pretty long so i think they're made to work with that other there is a bumper right here oh, right here that's resting it flat so that's as far as it goes down it does not does not push down like a normal m2 slot but i don't think that this is not going to fit no way so that is just uh look how high that is i mean that's at least an inch off the off the board that is not going to fit they give you some pretty long screws, but those are not, that is not going, there's a good angle. Since this has its own, and then I can use one of these anchored screws here, because these are pretty far. A big pain in the butt here. Focus on that. But look how, look at that tower. Focus. There we go. Just need to get it closer. We're going to leave this uh, thermal paste on here for right now. I want to do some basic testing with the, with the stock thermal paste, and then we'll put what Steve from Gamers Nexus sent over. And that's nice and tight. Now we're going to flip this down, which will snap that down and into place. All right, so that's all plugged in. I don't know why they, why they have a video out if it doesn't have an APU. I guess this board can be used with the board, the, the chips that have the APUs, the 2600s, and that's what it is. So we're not doing that. So we're going to go straight into the 5700. So if you put a 2600 uh, Ryzen in there with the Vega graphics card, then you have your, your display port and your, uh, your HDMI right there. Of course, this one was not sent. I bought all of this stuff. I do this for you guys, man. I, I enjoy the feedback. I enjoy the time with you guys. But this kind of stuff, when new hardware comes out, I love it. So it's an 8-pin and a 6-pin plugged in. Let's do one more cursory check. I need the video cable in it. Plus one for AMD not putting this, the plastic things in there. It's a waste of time. I hate pulling them out anyways. Especially if you put a card in a machine and you forget to pull the tab out and then it's kind of behind the, you know, the hookup, you know, and you're like, oh, damn it, you got to loosen it again to get the, yeah. Give us a heartbeat. There we go. There we go, bros. We're in. Detecting devices. Let's run that setup. Let's do a little quickie, uh, not tuning. Let's do the F7, which is usually that mode anyways. All right, so let's take one little look-see through here. Overclock auto, it's showing the 3600s, target frequency, memory performance, profile here. There we go. We're gonna try this base profile here, and we're just gonna leave that there. And that's for the 3600 DDR that we have. Boot it from this, I want it to be this. 
They got it. They got it. So it was just that second one I had put the priority in there to grab it. And they got it. So how fast is we're going to do pro custom. It's the one terabyte. Windows has been installed. That was literally like a minute. <laughs> that was a lot faster than a normal SSD. And then let's take a look. I'll let you guys see the close up of this. So you can see where the cooler is sets so right where the G the GPU is sitting. So I mean it's 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 it literally is just sitting there and resting on it. And this to the touch. Ooh, that's hot. That is definitely 50C. So the NVMe right there. I, you know, they don't, I don't know if they're going to not recommend. I mean, so I don't even think I could get a GPU looking at the the distance here. Let's let's take this down a little. Let's see. I don't think with that heat sink, I think that's setting just a little higher than that. And I don't think I could get another GPU in there without hitting that. Now I'm about to buy another one of those when they let me buy one and we will try it. But I think right now it's going to hit that, that M2 slot kind of around it. And see the, it's picking up the closest stuff. So this, this lens is not a, this is an auto focused uh, F4 2.8 lens. So this is going to pick up whatever's in front, the sharpest. Not a ton of room right there, but that is the, the hot spot there. So you see, you can see the GPU 26C right underneath. That's a hot spot, which is where the cooler is. So yeah, if you look at, so this thing will, the floor looks at the hottest point on the board which is right underneath the GPU. It's 46, 48C, 52C, GPU zero. So there we go. It looks like we have a kernel error. So that's maybe one reason. Let's close that. That's not seeing it. Wild rig. Not supported. So Phoenix is seeing it. Building the DAG. Yeah, it's not optimized. It's it's leveraging a uh, a generic OpenCL kernel right there. You can see it right there. It's using a it's using like it's equivalent to like doing it in software mode. So the memory auto overclock takes it from 1750 to to 1830. It had it went up to 54 when I did that for a second. Right there, controller load. That's it loading the DAG. See DAG file generation. It's hitting the DAG hard as it's building that uh and now, now it starts to try to mine, and that drops to six percent. So we are going to be waiting on drive. Or we're going to be waiting on uh, kernels for these uh, new releases. So I would anticipate DNS felt. All right. So that is that's a that's a location issue. It did the affinity correctly. Yes. I think we can do this. Well, let's just get this set up with the right. This is part of the fun for me. I know this might be like washing paint dry for some of you guys, but. Um, I actually enjoy this part of it, believe it or not. It's kind of weird. I'm kind of strange like that. Like trying to figure out what the problem is. All right, start dot bat. We're going to we're going to change this guy over here. So this is the pool. And we're going to use the port, this port here. And we're going to start this admin. And let's see if it let's see if it goes in through and does it. Change in difficulty. Let's see if it actually does it. We got it working, bros. 1200 hash now it's not optimized and it's just right out of the gate and it's using an older miner but i got one working 1201 hash let's take a look ski there's 10 releases here i'm assuming i'm gonna have to run a bat file with this it's just not gonna run so i need the slashes okay so i need to make a quick batch file for this let's do is that random x Copy this. And then do mine. All right, let's do that. And let's do threads. So that's the default interpreter. OK, more random X benchmarking. Bro, using the uh, JIT compiled mode, 4,000 hashes per second, unless that we broke the test. Let's try it again. Nope. 41, 21. 
I think a lot of people are going to go out and buy Ryzen 7s. <laughs> You're going to get 4,000 hashes out of their CPUs. What's your schedule for this week? I'm home all week. So um, at the end of this month, I am headed up to Seattle. I'm going to TruffleCon. I am a speaker at TruffleCon. Um, you guys will see some tweets out from that. I'm actually speaking on behalf of development side um, for rapid application development and then getting a product out to people when it comes to stuff. So a lot of the stuff I talk about on this channel a lot when we start talking development kind of things and then projects when we were talking about ICOs and people that were trying to build projects and saw, you know, like all these different ICOs that took in money and they had all these claims and they never were really producing products for people. I'm gonna try to articulate in my best way to a large group of developers there on how to get products out and in, in front of people and get that feedback loop started with people. So not just, you know, um, saying that they're gonna do a lot of stuff, but even if they've overpromised and oversold what they've what their original pitch was, if their intention is to deliver what they can on it, um, on how to do that. So I'm gonna start kind of, you know, instead of taking kind of little side shots to this, I'm gonna try to help the industry where I can on delivering projects because I helped build and deploy over 26 applications on this planet, including some that touch a lot of people. Um, and try to use some of those lessons learned. Things that I totally fell at multiple times and learned from and helped learn with a team and leading teams that way. I'm gonna to try to give some of that back at TruffleCon and try to help um, some of the developers just say, hey man, it's not the obvious stuff. Here's the little things that have helped and do it through kind of explanations of uh, uh, you know story time. I think a lot of people like kind of how a project gets set up and how it got delivered and some of the things that were lesson, le lessons learned there. So if you have a chance to get out to Seattle, TruffleCon is out there. Those tickets are pretty cheap um, in comparison to other crypto conferences. It's mainly developer focused. So I'll be doing that at the end of the month. So this, like this week and next week, I got to get some of the presentation material approved um, because I'm doing it on behalf of the company I work for too. Um, but that's, I'm starting to do more and more stuff that's outside of this channel stuff for you guys in the crypto space when it comes to helping deliver software and stuff like that. So 